All right, thank you so much, everyone. I uh, appreciate you coming in for the second day of content. We've had some fantastic speakers this morning. So let's hopefully continue that trend. My name's Tim. I'm a regional product manager for Nokia. I am an IP automation expert for APAC, if you like. So I cover our two software products uh, that cover data center fabric automation and the wide area uh, network automation. So that's our NSP product. But today, I'm going to be talking about network testing. The nuts piece will make sense eventually. So the questions I'm going to ask and answer in a conversation with myself, firstly, what is testing? What are the different types of testing? How does, test, does testing apply to network design and operations? And lastly, how do we test the network? So according to IBM, Software testing is the process of evaluating and verifying that a software product or application does what it's supposed to. So I'm talking in the context of software development here. We want to take a system, give it some known inputs, and then check the outputs. We want to make sure it does what we expect. When you start talking about fairly complex systems, you can start having very complex inputs and then a range of outputs based on the system, its running modes, the environment the system's running in, or any other variables set within the system. So this can get fairly complicated fairly quickly. For any given system, it's not possible to know how many bugs are in a system until you find them. So the process of testing within software systems is about being good enough. Checking the processes and the branching logic within that system that you care about to make sure that it does what you expect. Yes, the target is 100% coverage, but that's not really practical when we start talking about complex systems, and networks are exactly that, complex systems. So let's have a look at some types of testing. We'll, f we'll start with unit testing. You may have heard about this before, but the point of unit testing is to break down a system into its smallest or fairly small components and test them in isolation from the rest of the system. So you take a small building block that does a very specific thing, you give it an input, and you check the output. The point is to remove that from the rest of the system and control its environment. So in terms of you know, taking some JSON input and returning a BGP peer configuration, you give it you know, a peer address and a remote AS number, you expect some you know, Nokia config or other vendor config back in that given format, and you can check that. So stubbing and mocking are two terms you may see around unit testing. This is about looking at the unit and how it interfaces with the rest of the system. What you might need to do is put in a fake reply from the rest of the system. So you might have a unit that reaches out to a web service and grabs some configuration variable. What you can do is you can have a fake web service that only returns what you want it to. That's how you control the inputs to the system. Then we've got system testing. So uh, this is used to test end-to-end -end functionality. It's sometimes referred to as E2E testing or integration testing. This is about then bringing those units together, plugging them together, and the theory being that when you take a unit that you've tested and another unit that you've tested and you plug them together, they should do their aggregate function. So in terms of an example in network world, uh, generating a complete device configuration, not just a BGP stanza. I'll add in black box, te black box testing. This is not mutually exclusive with system and unit testing, but it's something that we're likely to see in the network world because we're often dealing with an appliance or a piece of software that we don't have the source for. We don't understand how it achieves what it does. We just know that when we give it this configuration, BGP gets stand up or routes get distributed. We don't have any concept of you know, all those units in between, so we can't break it down. The only way, thing we can do is put in some inputs and check the outputs. So yeah, a, a vendor's NOS, for example. You, know, you give it a configuration, you expect it to do a thing. So how does this apply to network design and operations? Well, let's look at some typical network design use cases. 
Say you're migrating between vendors. Yes, RFCs and other standards are written, but they're obviously open to interpretation, as I'm sure many of you have found. So if you can test the inputs to your device on one vendor and the inputs to your device on the other, in theory, they should have the same output. What if you're migrating between technologies? So RSVP and MPLS to SRV6. Again, these technologies achieve the same thing, but they achieve it in a very different way. Same deal as changing uh, the, the transport technology for a customer service. The customer service doesn't change, but the technology underneath does. So if you're designing a, a proof of concept lab, you might have some point-to-point -point services or some point-to-multi-point services. You want to check that when you migrate between MPLS and, say, EVPN VXLAN, that the routes are distributed or the layer two packets are sent and received in the same manner as with the old technology. I'll mention standards again because there are many of them. There could be internal architecture standards that you want to make sure your design meets. There could be RFCs. There could be the endless number of IEEE standards that apply not just to the protocols that we're used to, but think about specialist industries like rail and utilities that have all sorts of interesting TDM-based or timing protocols. These things are not super well understood, so if you can test to make sure that what you are doing meets the bounds of that protocol or the timing, you can have confidence that what you're designing does what it's meant to. And lastly, the iterative design approach. This is something that I imagine quite a few in the room are fairly familiar with. This is the figure it out as we go. Do something, run with it. Change something, run with it. You can still add testing in here because in your mind you might have an end goal, but you might have these milestones in between that you want to meet. You can place some guards that allow you to actually check you've met that milestone. And it gives you something that you can report to your team, your management to say, yep, we're here in the process. It might look like chaos, but we've actually got it under control. So looking at this from a software development thinking perspective, if you look at the design validation, so using a proof of concept against the specification, break it down into unit tests, figure out the parts of the spec that you want to meet, and write a test that will highlight whether you're meeting that or not. Same deal with the iterative approach. Write an integration test or a unit test to make light of each of those stages. Implementation validation, so this is going to make sure you build exactly what you designed. So if you have a design goal, write some integration tests that will check that the network you just deployed meets the SLAs that you are aiming to, to meet. Same deal with changing the technology. If you're moving a network from uh, wired to wireless or, or vice versa, build some black box testing where you insert some packets in one end and check that they come out in the other. A lot of this you're already probably doing, but this is just a different way of thinking about it. So what about operations? This is where you're ensuring the network stays up and you're making those changes from one place to the next. Building a network baseline is a great way to know the norm versus the abnormal. You, we all might know when you're running a network, you have a feel for what interfaces should be up, what protocols should be exchanging routes, and what their certain traffic levels normally are. You know, we can sometimes feel this. You look at a link and go, oh, that's not running quite as hot as usual, I wonder why. Why not codify that thinking? Why not, when you make a change, get something that pulls the traffic levels of the network before the change, say adjust for some time series or some dip in you know, the 1 a.m. you're doing the change, and checks it afterwards. So this can also be broken down into unit testing as well, which I'll show you later in the demo. Software upgrades. This is something we've all been through. We have a network that's in a working, known good state. We make some fairly large changes that we've hopefully tested in the lab. And if you've tested in the lab, you know what should be different or what should be the same. So build a testing scheme that takes into account the prior state of the network and then the expected changes. And then you know, when you're doing the maintenance in the middle of the night, you can rely on your testing tools that you wrote when you were caffeinated, not half asleep. And lastly, customer impact. As I mentioned before, when you change the underlying technology, 
the customers expect the service to be the same. You've got SLAs, you've got contracts, you've got to make sure that the service you're delivering stays consistent. But network's always changing. We're adding capacity, we're adding paths, we're adding more you know, ECMP, or we're changing the technology we're using to distribute our customers' packets. Doing testing for the customer experience is also a useful way for you to understand how your network operates and how your users experience your network. And this is a form of black box testing because it's from the customer's perspective. They don't care what technology you're using. They just want their service. So then, how do we go about testing the network? Nuts. Network unit tests. Uh, this is a neat open source tool that is a plugin for PyTest. PyTest is a really well-known, well-used Python testing framework uh, that you know, Django and a whole bunch of Python software platforms use. But this is a plugin. It uses Napalm, which is a, an abstracted mechanism of talking to network devices to build test cases and run them. So on the snippet on the slide, it's a YAML file. You have a test class. So in this case, the class is test napalm BGP neighbors. And then for each case in the list, there's a neighbor that I want it to check. And it will go in, and for each of those parameters, it builds a unit test. So this is 10 or 12 different unit tests just in that small snippet. And because NUTS is a extension to PyTest, you can drop down into native Python and write your own advanced tests and run them alongside anything you build with NUTS. So to demonstrate this, we're going to need an example network. Uh, because this is a Nokia talk, we're using SI Linux and Container Lab. If you've not used or seen or played with Container Lab yet, head to containerlab.dev. I suggest you do. What we have here is a Container Lab network that's a three-tier data center clause. Six devices because it gives us a nice, you know, uh, ladder to work with. Two super spines, a spine layer and a leaf layer. There is an eBGP underlay, so each device has its own ASN, and we're doing eBGP peering. So there's no, you know, IGP, ISIS, or OSPF. It's eBGP on the underlay. And then because we're going to run eVPN VXLAN over the top, the super spines are acting as iBGP route reflectors for the overlay. So the spine switches are not involved in the overlay. They end up being just layer three routers. And in Nokia terminology, we have a Mac VRF, which is a layer two VRF that sits on the leaf layers, and we have two clients. Mac learning's enabled, so we get the Macs from the clients. So let's head across to our live demo. So we have our container lab network, two leaves, two spines, and two super spines. And if we hop down into one of the leaves, we have some eVPN information. So we have a learnt route uh, from our local interface, and we have the eVPN route from the other leaf. So we're going to do some maintenance on this network. We're going to do some maintenance on one of the spines. So this is the spines that aren't involved in the overlay, so we're not in expecting any impact to this Mac VRF service. What we want to do is we want to pull the, le the spine out of, uh, out of the network, out of the underlay, so we'll drain it, and then we'll shut some interfaces, and then I'll pretend to do some maintenance on it, then we'll bring it back up again. So how can we use NUTS specifically to help us do this and make sure that we don't screw it up, we make sure that we put the network back the way we found it? So uh, in this repo, I've got a few bits and pieces, but what we really care about is this NUTS directory. So in here, we have uh, an inventory. So this is, these are our hosts. So host name and access details for Napalm, because uh, this means that Napalm returns the BGP peers, the interfaces, the LLTP neighbors, all in a standard JSON format. So it doesn't matter what the device is, 
As long as the Napalm driver works, you can do this. So that's our inventory, and we've got a configuration file and a few bits, of, a few bits and pieces. So if we drop down into the tests directory, we have a few bits and pieces here, but uh, we have uh, some LLDB neighbors already. So now we've got, so this is similar to what I showed on the slide before. You've got a host, the local port, and uh, the remote host and the remote port. So this test will check that those LLDP neighbors are actually up. So we can run that. Hopefully I spelt it the correct way. So it's four tests and it passed. Great, four little ticks. Why don't we add a little bit more information? So from that small YAML snippet, it's generated four different tests. Uh, one to check the interface in the remote host and the interface in the remote port. So that, for each of them, is four tests. But let's go a step further. Let's go and capture the state of the network now, before we start our maintenance, for something that we can check later. Here. So we have a small Python file when my fingers can work. So this build pre-state, this again uses the Napalm library. It goes to every device, so all six. It captures all the interfaces, all the LLDP neighbors, and all the BGP neighbors for the underlay and the overlay, and it sticks them into a YAML file. So instead of having to build this by hand, I built it from the network. So I've captured the now state. If you had a source of, source of truth like Netbox, you could also talk to Netbox, use its APIs, and build this the same. So now what we can do we can run this one. And this will collect a few hundred tests. So give it a, a half second. Now this is logging into the network live, pulling down BGP neighbors, LLDP neighbors, and interfaces, checking that the interfaces are up, they have the correct speed, the LLDP neighbors are there, the correct host is on the correct interface, and that the BGP neighbors are there, both the underlay and the overlay, the remote ID is correct, the remote ASN, the local ASN, all the configuration is correct. So we have 284 passes and 24 skips. The skips are because I've not put the MAC addresses in for the interfaces. You could put the interfaces in for each of them if you like, but um, that required a little bit more coding and I couldn't be bothered. So we have some skips, but that's fine. It's all green. So let's go do some maintenance. So we'll log into pod one, spine one. Uh, and in SRL, we have the concept of a maintenance group. Uh, in a maintenance group, you can configure a, a group name. In this case, I've called it drain BGP underlay. And what this does is I can have it apply BGP policies onto peers of a certain network. So in this case, I've got a reject all policy that will apply to the underlay network. So our BGP neighbors, we're showing on the right-hand side, we have some uh, received, active, and transmitted routes. And so we can apply our maintenance. Actually, before I do that, I have some, I have some advanced tests that I can show you first. So we have uh, test EVPN bridge table and test maintenance groups. And so to make sure that our services aren't affected, I run a test that grabs the MAC table and it checks that the learned routes are there from the remote destination as well as the local one. So if I leave a local port down, the test will fail. So we can actually and we can test EVPN. So again, this one runs and it passes. Same deal, I've got a test for the maintenance groups. 
So just make sure that there are no maintenance groups active on any of the devices, so that when I'm done my maintenance, I can be sure that, yep, everything's unapplied and rule back up. We'll go in and start our maintenance. Maintenance group, uh, group, group drain, maintenance mode, admin state, we're gonna enable that maintenance mode. So we'll commit that. And if we go in and have a look at our BGP neighbors, we've now got no active and no transmitted routes. So now we're, reje we're rejecting, traffic should be draining off the interfaces. So to check that that's actually applied that config, I've got the import policy and to all the neighbors, it's added a reject policy and same for the export. It's rejecting it, awesome. So in theory, we're good to go and do our maintenance, which I meant to do while I was here. Uh, we'll do, what interface shall we do? Let's do uh, the interface to the leaves. 1-1, one, one, admin state disable, and 1-2, admin state disable. Cool, so now in theory, this is isolated from the client, so we can go and do our upgrades, whatever we like, on, on this device. So let's see what our tests say. So we'll run our tests, uh, we'll check for uh, the maintenance groups. So we should get a failure here, great. So we have a failure, that's what we expected. And it says, yep, maintenance group not active. Great, we failed that, that's what we, what we expect. But we wanna make sure that our EVPN bridge table is still good. So on the leaves, those Macs are still there. In theory, the client service is still running. So let's go back in and finish our maintenance. We'll uh, bring our interface back up. All right. Now, and we'll go in and bring our BGP neighbors back up. So, set system, set system, oh, to candidate, maintenance group, group drain, maintenance mode, uh, mode, enable, yep. This is not meant to be, Tim struggles to do the CLI, but here we are. I actually want, we want maintenance mode disable. As I said, this is. That's better. So if we look at our BGP neighbors, you know, this is two in the morning that I'm doing this. Yeah, I've got some active routes, all good. But those eagle-eyed viewers would see that there's not actually some output on that third neighbor. I wonder why. But because I've got some tests, what I can do uh, is I can just run PyTest, and this will run the full suite. So this will check for our maintenance groups, it'll check for our EVPN uh, routes, and it will also run the pre-state. Ooh, this doesn't. This is not what I was expecting. I was expecting this to succeed because I've undone my maintenance. Everything should be back up. Why are my tests failing? Let's have a quick look. Yeah, it's, it's wrapping around a bit. Oh, I will. All right, let's have a look. So test is up. SID pod one L2. Okay, so it's something to do with L2 and spine one. It looks like it's saying an interface isn't up. Scroll, oh, yeah, okay. 128 on L2 and 122 on spine one. I wonder what that could be. Just looking back at through the test, all the initial things, you know, succeeded. The maintenance group, the EVPN, yeah, okay. So let's go have a look. Go look at our spine one. Let's have a look at our interfaces. Ah, that'd be why. I didn't bring one of the leaf-facing interfaces up. So on our network, our spine facing leaf one and leaf two, 
only one interface is up. If I was to go move on to the other spine now and shut down those interface, interfaces, Leaf 2 wouldn't have an uplink and we'd cause a customer outage. Cool, the tests have saved my bacon. So let's fix this. Cool, interface is back up. We'll run my tests again. Hopefully BGP comes up fast enough. Remember, this is nearly 400 tests all up. 400 little items that we're checking to make sure are correct. Ah, sorry, nearly 300. 298 passes, perfect. Maintenance succeeded. Can we swap back to the slides? So the takeaways from this are software development testing methodologies are useful not just for software dev, as we use software in the network to do operations, to design things, we're using AI now to do designs and to predict config, you might want to check that that's as it says it is. Hallucinations are a thing. Iterating on ideas, designs, and processes means that you make changes you know, iteratively and you know, in a faster pace. You want to make sure that your end goal stays in mind. So building a test that checks that you figure out where you want to get to, build something that'll check that you are where you think you are. And as we saw in the live demo, this helps to improve operational process, especially for repetitive tasks. If I'm in a massive DC and I've got to go do this you know, 50 more times, I, it's very easy for me to forget something. Or better, use automation and then test that automation. So you build a software system, test a software system. So catch problems before they occur. By running a pre-state, Yes, I built the pre-state based right before I did the maintenance, but if you build it from some other source of truth or from another day, run the pre-state before you do your maintenance. Oh, that link's down. Great. If I had taken that spine down, I would cause an outage just as I started the maintenance. I can fix that before I go and do it. And lastly, improve your design process. If you think about designing things with this sort of testing in mind, you can make your operations easier, you can make your iterative design easier, and you can catch problems before they occur. Thank you very much for your time. I've got a couple minutes for questions.